Awesome. Welcome everyone. Welcome to today's uh, School of Music event. We're just going to wait a couple of minutes just to make sure everyone logs on, but it's such a pleasure to have you all in tonight's event. We have a variety of different professors here today, all from the School of Music, so they're all definitely very passionate to be able to share their expertise and of course share your own journey and your interest in APU. So again, we're just going to wait a couple of minutes before we begin and just to make sure everyone logs on. And then if you do have any questions, you're more than welcome to submit that in the chat. We have another missions, rep missions representative here today who will be answering some questions in the chat. And then we'll also be saving part of today's event as a Q&A. That way you yourselves will be able to directly ask our professors any questions related to the School of Music. And then if you are also inclined, if you have a specific major you're looking at, let's say commercial music, maybe you're looking at a performance major. Um, if you have any specific major within the School of Music, feel free to send it in the chat. Again, we have a variety of different professors on today's event. So definitely any one of these professors will be able to speak into um, some different programs here in the, uh, the School of Music. But thank you again. Uh, thank you once again. Again, we'll just wait maybe another minute or two just to make sure everyone logs on tonight. A few more people hop on, so that's awesome. Sorry for the ones who, who joined first. You're gonna hear me say welcome and hello a couple times just to make sure we get everyone in, but it's definitely such a pleasure to have everyone here in tonight's event. And then of course, please, if you do have any questions, feel free to send them in the chat anytime. You can either send them now, we'll be reading them later, or if something comes into your mind later on, you can definitely send that in the chat. And then of course, if you do think of a question after tonight's event, you're more than welcome to send those questions to our UG admissions email and we'll try to connect you with the, uh, either these professors for School of Music related questions or and of course, any admissions related questions, you're more than welcome to send out your email. We'll drop in the chat sometime during today's event. I'll just wait one or two more minutes and then we'll get started. Great, well, let's go ahead and get started with today's event. Of course, um, welcome to today's School of Music event. My name is Randall Chavez and I'm an admissions counselor here with Azusa Pacific. I work in the undergrad side. Uh, today we have a variety of different professors that you'll be hearing from on screen today. Um, I'm also joined by one of, my one of my colleagues, Brooke Bonner. If you do have any questions, please feel free to send them into the Q&A you see on screen. Um, she will be answering any admissions related questions and then any school of music questions will actually be having a Q&A portion of today's event where you can actually ask some of these professors your own questions. But of course, I'm just going to go off of a list up right here so we don't have to wait awkwardly and see whose turn it is next, but I'm just going to ask for some um, introductions. So first off, we have Dr. Russell. Dr. Russell, do you mind um, introducing yourself and then introducing what program you will be representing today? Sure. Hey, everybody. Uh, yes, I'm Dr. Russell. Uh, I primarily teach violin. That's my specialty. Um, but I'm also here as the uh, director of music theory and practical musicianship. So uh, which are touch points for all music, all music majors. Um, so yep, I'll be answering questions and uh, fielding things of either of those fields. Awesome. Thank you so much. Next off, we have another Russell, Chris Russell. Do you mind introducing yourself? And then same exact question, which programs or programs will be representing today? Sure. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming out. It, it's uh, great to have you here. And that's right. There, there are two Russells here. We are not related. Uh, we work closely together enough that we could be, but uh, we're actually uh, not, not quite related. But we work in the same department. I'm the chair of the music performance department, which I'll be talking about a little bit later. 
And I'm also a conductor of the APU Symphony, and I'm the head of the Graduate Instrumental Conducting Program. So again, welcome everyone. Wonderful, thank you so much, Professor Russell. And then we're also joined today by a Dr. Simmons. Dr. Simmons, do you mind introducing yourself and introducing which programs we'll be representing? Hi, I'm John Simons. I'm the Associate Dean for the School of Music. So I direct, uh, I help uh, with the undergraduate studies and with graduate studies in our School of Music. So I'll be here representing uh, and telling you a little bit later on about the School of Music and give you an overview of the School of Music. Um, I am in the worship area and conducting uh, by trade. And today also I'll, I'll be telling you a bit about uh, the music studies department, which is one of the three departments we have in our music school. So glad you're here. Look forward to having a conversation with you tonight. Wonderful, thank you so much. And then we're also joined by a Dr. Martin. Dr. Martin, uh, would you mind uh, introducing yourself and then uh, explaining which programs you'll be representing? Yes, welcome everyone. It's great to have you with us. I am Stephen Martin and I direct the music and worship program here in the School of Music. So we'll be chatting about that a little bit later on. Thank you so much. And then next off we have Dr. Uh, uh, Professor Beatty. So Mr. Beatty, would you mind explaining uh, which programs you'll be representing and introducing yourself? Hello everybody. Thanks for joining us this evening. Hope that uh, we'll be able to offer some good help for you and answer some of the questions that you may have about APU and especially the School of Music. I am the chairman of the commercial music department. So students who uh, have a desire to move on in the world of the music industry, the music business, are students that uh, are involved in my department. And I look forward to explaining a little bit more about that to you later. Wonderful, thank you so much. And then last but not least, we are joined by Chrissy Hawkins. Uh, Ms. Hawkins, would you mind um, explaining your role with the School of Music and with the overall just code in general. Yes, so School of Music is housed in the College of the Arts here at APU, which is eight art departments across campus. And so I work closely with the School of Music in recruitment because we know that you did not wake up yesterday and decide to major in music. You probably have been honing your craft for years and you probably want to be part of a prestigious school like APU School of Music. So we come alongside and assist you as musicians to find the right niche and um, get, you, get you to learn about our program. So I work in recruitment for the College of the Arts. That's awesome. Thank you so much for all for sharing. I did like what you said about finding your passion, finding your niche. Um, I'll definitely be asking some similar questions later in today's event because uh, my background, I graduated from APU last year in 2019. Um, I graduated in the film department. So within the College of the Arts, just right next door, but I can definitely attest to the whole college's just passion for helping you understand what you want to go to. And I'm pretty sure that all these professors here you see on screen will definitely be doing the same exact thing for all you students wanting to go into music. Um, but first off, as you heard, we have so many different departments and programs that we're representing. We have music studies, we have performance, uh, we have music and worship, we have jazz, we, have, we have ensembles. Um, professors who are representing those different departments, I'm just gonna ask maybe, can you explain specifically what your department does? Maybe explain some majors that students can, can study within the department and maybe even some career opportunities. Of course, the, the whole aspect of college is not just to get an education, but we want to be preparing students into becoming violinists, becoming performers, becoming all these wonderful roles in the creative arts. So again, explain maybe uh, what your department does, some majors they might be able to study, and then some career opportunities. I'll start off with the um, Department of Music Studies. Well, it's great again to, to be with you tonight. Let me give you an overview of the School of Music and then tell you a little bit about the uh, music studies department and the different opportunities for you there. And, and uh, then I'll, it's all right, uh, uh, Randall, I'll kick it over to Dr. Beatty and then he can kick it over to Mr. Russell and they can hear about all three departments. Does that work? That sounds wonderful, thank you. All right. Well, our school of music, uh, who are we? Well, we are an innovative community and we're grounded in Christian faith, faith, Christian faith, and we're dedicated to helping you to become the artist, the musician that God has designed you to be. We're home to over 300 music majors, uh, undergraduates, graduates, 
and some pursuing something called an artist certificate, which is a, a performance certificate for very elite, elite players as well. We are in every country on the globe, in every state in the United States, and our School of Music is the largest accredited Christian School of Music in a university in the Western United States. Uh, we are also uh, home to over 500 people in our ensembles. So when you come here, what are you gonna do in the School of Music? You're gonna make music, you're gonna study, and you're gonna work with great people who are industry connected, who are at the top of their field, and who are gonna invest their lives in you. And then you're gonna perform in, in great ensembles. And we have ensembles from a wide variety. We have award-winning jazz orchestra. You'll hear about that with, with Mr. Beatty in the commercial music department. We have a studio orchestra that really prepares you for the studio life that is here in Los Angeles. A symphony orchestra, wind ensemble, whole gamut of instrumental ensembles as well choral ensembles from our chamber singers to our vocal jazz to university choir to men's choir to women's choir to gospel choir to vocal jazz to a, a whole variety of other vocal ensembles in addition we do opera as well as a school of music we give about 350 events a year so we perform and we do great things so we perform here, we tour all over the world, and we record. So you're gonna be busy when you're here and you're gonna be making things, making music and working with great artists. What are some of the things that, that you can prepare to be? I can just tell you some of the things that our faculty are. We're composers, we're performers in instrumental, in, uh, in orchestral instruments, in voice. We're performers in uh, piano. We are also accompanists, artists of all different varieties. We're music educators and teachers. We're worship leaders and church music scholars. We're conductors. We're music industry leaders. We're all artists and scholars. As we talked about our music, our school of music has three departments, music studies, commercial music and performance. Uh, our music studies department, uh, which I'll, I'll tell you about a little tonight, uh, is home to composition. So if you want to be a composer, if you want to be the one who writes the music, who uh, works uh, in the industry uh, for writing film scores, for composing music that would be published and performed throughout the world, for going into a community and being a composer for uh, uh, an entire city or a community. That's part of what we do. And you study with top level composers. We also do in a music studies theory, music theory. And music theory is a foundational art of our craft. It's teaching the language. And, and uh, Dr. Russell can tell you a bit about the theory and, music theory and practical musicianship and why that that's critical it's a foundational element and that's a part of our music studies department we also house our musicology which is music history which tells the story of of music and it, it lets you know what has come before and what is now in the story of music we are all we also have ethnomusicology which is a study of our different cultures and the music of that culture. For example, right now, if you were in school, one of the classes you might want to take is soul music, uh, which is looking at the development of gospel music and how, and how that moved into rhythm and blues and how that infuses many different aspects of our society and culture today. We also, in music studies, house the music and worship department, which uh, Stephen Martin, Professor Martin will, will be telling you about in, in a bit. And we house music education. So if you wanna be a teacher, uh, this, is, this is the department you'll be in. And the final part of our department 
is uh, we have the, the Bachelor of Arts a degree in, in the Music Studies Department. Most of our degrees are Bachelor of Music degrees. They are intensive professional uh, degrees where you will come and start and jump right into music making uh, and come out with a, the industry standard Bachelor of Music. But the other degree we have is the Bachelor of Arts, which is more of a liberal arts degree where you will do music, but then you can also study another subject alongside music. Uh, so looking forward to answering your questions. And with that, let me send that over, let me send it over to Dr. to Mr. Beatty and talk to you about commercial music. Thank you, Dr. Simons. Thank you very much. So uh, when I meet with prospective students and uh, their parents, very often what I uh, find out is that most people think that to make a living in music, you have two choices. You could either be a music teacher or you could be a performer. And most parents think that if you decide to become a performer, you're going to be living in a cardboard box under a bridge somewhere. But the <laughs> fact of the matter is that there are many, many ways to make a living in music. And many of those are housed in my department in the area that we call commercial music. So for people who are interested in maybe not being a performer or a teacher, but maybe they're interested in being a songwriter or an arranger or an orchestrator, a composer for films or for video games, somebody that wants to be a producer, somebody whose passion lies in the area of technology and audio recording. This is where this is where those students come to get their education. Now we have in our degree in commercial music, we have five tracks or five areas mm -hmm. of specialization so that people can focus their studies on the thing they most want to do. So we have instrumental performance, we have vocal performance, we have audio recording, we have arranging and composing, and then we have a track for people that want to go into music business, people that want to work for starting a record label or work for a publishing company. Maybe they want to do artist management or concert promotion. A lot of times people don't even know about some of the jobs that are available that can actually dovetail quite nicely with your existing set of priorities. So anybody that wants to go into the music business in some way, shape or form, take their uh, degree in commercial music here at APU. The other two great advantages that we have are one is our proximity to Los Angeles. That means that we have access to some of the greatest musicians in the world who work full time in the Los Angeles recording studio scene. And many of those teach for us here at APU. In commercial music, everybody that's on the faculty is a working professional musician and many of them have resumes as long as my arm in the work that they've done. So it's a chance to not only learn from and rub shoulders with but to really spend time with people who don't just talk about it, but who have been doing it for many years. The second advantage that we have is that because commercial music has been around long enough now, we've been in the, the degrees have been in existence for over 20 years. We now have a great network of alumni who are out in the business in various places working full time. And many of them accept our current students as interns as a way of working your way into the professional world from the educational world. I remember many years ago being jealous of schools that had great uh, alumni organizations. It's like once you went to that school board, you were part of that family. And that's kind of how APU has become with the music industry. We've got a great network of people who are former students who are out there working, who are looking forward to helping current students. So those are three really good reasons why coming to APU is a really good idea and being a part of the commercial music program. And with that, I will pass it off to Professor Chris Russell to tell you a little bit about performance. Thank you, Professor Beatty. So the um, music performance department, we kind of look at it as being a, like a conservatory training that you get within the School of Music. It's um, an intensive experience that you can get to learn your instrument in a very detailed and um, uh, focused way. So the music performance area, you can get individual degrees in each of your instruments. So violin performance, vocal performance, um, you can go to guitar performance, uh, piano performance, all the performance intensive degrees are housed in, in this area. And uh, as 
Professor Beatty said, we and uh, Dr. Simons, we have a really, really illustrious faculty that we draw on from the LA area. We have several members of the LA Philharmonic who are here on faculty. Several of them, they only teach at APU. So if you wanna come study with this particular person, like the one of the bassoonists from the LA Phil, you have to come to APU and you would study only exclusively with, with that person. And they're able to uh, give such a perspective on the life of being in a professional orchestra. And many times our faculty have worked with students on uh, just excerpts and just preparing for auditions to get to that next level. We have some who've worked for um, and who still work for the LA Opera. Our principal bass teacher is the principal bassist of the LA Opera. And as uh, Professor Beatty said, we have a lot of uh, faculty members who work in the Hollywood studios that uh, you hear them all the time, but you may not uh, realize that, you know, they are walking the halls at APU and uh, they're just the, the nicest people. We have uh, one of our principal horn players, uh, Jim Thatcher is one of our teachers here. He's been on 3000 movies and TV shows. So, Anytime you see a TV show or a, um, um, a movie made in Hollywood from like the 70s to the 90s and you hear a horn solo, it's most likely it's uh, Jim Thatcher that's playing it. And he only teaches at APU. So these are the sorts of things that, that we find are, um, make, make our, our place special. And also importantly that uh, we are a Christian university as well. And that's one thing that also stands us out among all the schools in the area that you might get a university that um, is very good musically, but faith is not a component. You have other universities that are Christian schools, great Christian environment, musically maybe not as good. But here at APU, we like to think that we have both that are absolutely first rate for the experience that you get as a musician and to deepen your faith as, um, as a Christian. So in the performance area, you, uh, you can go into um, performing, obviously, you can perform in different orchestras, you can perform uh, in the studios, you can go into teaching, you can pretty much take the talent that you are learning here and go to the next level. We have students go into master's degrees, into doctoral degrees. We have some who have sung on Broadway, have some who play with big orchestras. It's, it's um, uh, I think the education that you'll get here uh, opens up um, a vista, a complete vista for you, for opportunities. And we have a big international contingent here. I know in, in the orchestra alone, I mean, we have students from uh, China, from Korea, from uh, Indonesia, from Brazil, from Norway. And, and I think I counted once in rehearsal, I, I think I heard like five or six different languages being spoken during the break. And it's a really, really cool thing for students to be able to uh, experience that. But then you all come together to make music. And that, that's one thing that's very, very special. And, and uh, speaking of um, ensembles, Dr. Simon mentioned this, we have a, a great um, contingency of choirs. We have a women's choir, Bel Canto. We have a men's choir. We have a gospel choir. Uh, there's a university choir, which is about 60 musicians. We have uh, a chamber singers, about 30. We have a, a masterworks chorale, which is about 80 as well. On the instrumental side, we have a symphony and a wind ensemble and a symphonic band. We have a guitar ensemble. We have um, a very um, uh, thriving chamber music program, and that gives you a, um, an area of learning that you um, that really increases your musicality when you're playing in a string quartet or in a, in a piano trio. We also have an opera program uh, as well. So these are the sorts of things that you learn in the uh, the music performance department, and, and really as a student here at APU. So I kick it back to Randall, I'll kick it back to you. Awesome. Well, the three of you, thank you so much for just sharing so much about each departments and the School of Music. There's just so many things I want to touch on in what you all just said. The first piece I want to really touch on is 
really how do you equip students for success? Each, all, all three of you really spoke into that with the professors that they'll be that they'll be connecting with with the diversity of programs. And then this question is open to, to anyone that would like to speak into this, but how do you equip students for success or most more so even what do students have access to within the School of Music? Uh, I know in my experience, just seeing the School of Music, there's just different facilities, there's different programs. Um, how do you equip students with uh, for success and how, how do they get there? What do they have access to? And again, this is open for any professor. Well, I'll jump in on that. Um, in the, the current world in which we live, um, my uh, attitude about equip, being equipped for success is to have multiple skills. Um, most of the people that I know that, have, that are making careers in the music business or in performing or in education, many of them have more than one thing that they're good at. So one of the things that we try to do is not only to improve the thing that you are already good at, but to add to that, to add to your skill set. One of the things that's really common that, that students learned that many of them go on to really utilize to their advantage is music and technology. Most students, when they come to us, have maybe played around a little bit with the technology of music, but that's certainly a significant component of our program. And students use that to their advantage in many ways after they graduate. So I would say my answer to that is that we, we help equip you and, and add to your skill set. And the more things that you're able to do well, the more chances you have of being a really successful career musician. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in too on that and, and uh, dovetail off what Professor Beatty said. It, and Randall, it's sort of what you alluded to also that, that we have such a great faculty that's here that can train you uh, not out of a book, but out of their own experience as well. Also, the School of Music has been very uh, deliberate about the curriculum that the students have. And we've been very um, almost in the forefront of teaching music technology, that from your very first semester here, you're learning technology. And it doesn't matter if you're a performance major, whatever your, your major is, you're going to learn uh, things that most uh, undergrads don't learn till maybe, I don't know, the third year, if at all. And uh, in Professor Beatty said the environment that we're in now, the undergrads have really taken full advantage of learning and honing their technical skills to learn how to play with the click track, to learn how to use Logic Pro, to um, uh, know how to make an effective recording, how to make an effective video recording as well. And it's been kind of fascinating for me to, to see this over the past semester because the freshmen, sophomore, all the undergrads who started here, it was no problem for them. And then when we get students who are in master's or art of certificate, who maybe are very, very advanced players, they didn't have that experience. So for them, it was a big um, catch up for them to, to be able to learn this technology very, very quickly. But our undergrads, they, they just uh, took to it right away. So it, it's this, it's the versatility and it's also the, um, the detailed work that you, that you get to do in your instrument and in, in the classes that really equip you to move forward. And, Wonderful. Um, oh, go know, ahead. I was gonna say, one thing that, that I do love just building on what Professor Russell said was even, as, even in this time where we're disconnected, if you go onto any of our social media sites and you see the work of our ensembles, you see the work of our performers, what you need to know is behind all those production aspects are our students who are doing all the behind the scenes production. Uh, Mr. Beatty's uh, commercial music department and a whole team of students are coming alongside every one of our ensembles, every one of our uh, chamber groups to make music even in a time where uh, we're unable to be together. Um, and it's, it's been actually really wonderful to see how adaptable and how marketable the skills are with what our students are learning right now. And on, on top of that, you know, how, how do we prepare you for success? Is we walk alongside you. We are all here together as a large community 
and we open up the connections that we have in life to our students. That's how most artists get their start is, who did you study with? Who do you know? And so the, that we, from here, the entire world opens up to you, starting with the complete LA art scene and beyond to the country and then on to the world. Because as Mr. Professor Russell said, we are, we are very global in our reach as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. I, I definitely love what you mentioned about just the partnership. I think that's something that's been very unique in my experience as an undergrad. It's just my professors being able to, like you said, walk alongside me and just, just open up all those different opportunities. So uh, that's definitely something that's been very, very intentional that I've seen, seen at APU. Uh, something I really want to expand on is just like what the three of you said is just the adaptability and how you're preparing students with these skills, skills ahead of the market. Um, there's one very big and obvious question right now is how is the School of Music working with students in a virtual setting? Uh, what does that look like for students right now? Of course, we want to go back to in-person learning, but how is the School of Music helping students, maybe, maybe not even just on the academic side, but what about the emotional side? I know with that partnership, you were probably very close with students and we're not just looking at a, a body in the classroom and then you're gonna get a job, but we're making intentional relationships. What is the School of Music doing right now in a virtual setting and how are you supporting students that way? Well, I know in my personal experience, I've um, just being able to meet with students outside of class, I mean, by Zoom, but but having those appointments. And and that's something actually that I, that I hear when we have faculty meetings, any kind of meeting, uh, um, interaction with faculty on Zoom um, is how, how critical that's been recently and having, having those, still having those one-on-one -on -one connections. Um, so I know, yeah, it is, it is a hard, uh, there are difficulties certainly in this format, but I think it's just highlighted to us having the, the student to, to faculty relationship that it's not, you're not just clicking into an online course where you get the content, but Having, still having these relationships has been crucial. And, and to add to that, I, I think partly because uh, when we had to go online with the students who were already here, we already built a foundation with them. We knew them, we knew them from our classes, we knew them from our ensembles. They would, we'd see them in the hallway, they'd come and uh, crash into our office just to you know share something uh, with us. And uh, one thing that, I remember an alum said to me who went on to a master's program, he says, you know, I didn't realize until I was gone how much the APU faculty cared for each of the students because I'm not getting that where I am. It's just sort of like a number at, uh, uh, at, at the university I, I currently am. But Randall, to get back to your, your question about uh, one, some things that we're doing, well, obviously it's been difficult. There's no question because as musicians, we thrive on making music together. So we've had to think of um, things outside the box that are maybe more um, uh, more innovative. And well, how can we use this time? Because we can't you know, put on full performances. So for a lot of the ensembles, the whole first semester, we were concentrating on really honing their recording skills, how to make a good recording, how to um, how to play to a click track, things that I'd mentioned earlier, and. Also, one thing that we've been able to take advantage of is to bring in a lot of guests because a lot of um, people from around the world, they're sort of in the same position as well. So we've brought in really high level guests to come in and just speak to our students and talk about their careers. Um, you know, I had a, a, a conductor from England who's, you know, conducts all over the world, but he was free. And so he said, sure, I'll come and I'll come and speak to your students as well. I've had people who play in the Hollywood studios who have come in uh, and talked to our students as well. I had a member of the LA Phil come in I, and we lined up all these different guests. I actually had an executive director from one of the big orchestras come and speak to our students about arts management and, and what, you know, behind the scenes sorts of things. So these are the sort of things that, that we're working on now that we're trying to say, okay, it's not like we just throw up our hands and say, oh, well, you know, we just have to do it all on all on Zoom. The, the professors are are really working hard to make um, the situation as good as possible by thinking of new things. 
uh, and and uh, again for the orchestra, I mean, we're working on auditions, we're working on orchestral excerpts, things that we wouldn't normally have time for. It's like, okay, well now now we have the time for it, and it will be valuable. But that's one thing that I've noticed this semester. And if you listen to some of our recordings, we have a YouTube channel, um, APU Music, APU Music Performance you'll hear a lot of these online projects and you will be amazed when you hear them because we have students on um, at least four different continents who are recording in their bedrooms in their living rooms and when you hear the recording says i wouldn't have absolutely no idea when i listen to it and and it's been very impressive and as professor si dr simon said yes the students are working on the audio part of it, working with you know, uh, 10, 20, 40 different uh, tracks of music and putting it together. And just to add to that, tomorrow you'll receive in your inbox from College of the Arts, our monthly newsletter. And we are actually highlighting student work in that newsletter. So those recordings that Professor Russell is referring to will be in that email. So you can look for that tomorrow. And I'd also answer the question this way, our student to teacher ratio is low. And so our classroom sizes are small and that helps our professors care for our students because they know them all by name, which is very valuable. You know, um, I'd like to hear what uh, Dr. Martin has to has to say about that, but you know, just what, what are we doing right now? This is a community of artists. We're doing that. Uh, we haven't taken a situation passively. Every faculty, office, every person is equipped with the technology to teach. We've made sure our students have what they need to receive the learning and send it back and interact and interact with one another on the technical side. But I'd love to hear what. Dr. Martin uh, has to say about how we care for, for you beyond just the technique at, with health and well being as well. And I, I'd also love to hear what Dr. Beatty has to say with that because I, I know that the, he's absolutely involved and it's, it's your health and well being is, is a part of being a part of our school. Uh, Stephen, what, what are your thoughts with that? Yeah, you know, after having taught here for a number of years and seeing many incoming classes, you can imagine what it would have been like to be an incoming freshman this year. And I have to say, this is one of the most remarkable classes I have seen that mm -hmm. are supporting one another. And um, I'll just tell you a quick story from one of our worship studio courses this past fall. Um, we got toward the end of the semester and the students had really, really... Um, supported each other, not only musically, but emotionally. And, uh, and of course we have conversations and our faculty are available outside of class as Professor Russell mentioned. Um, but one student said, you know, I was really looking for community uh, this semester with being in the dorms and things like that. But I realized uh, that this class helped me realize I was really looking for communion in the sense of a deeper connection with actually, uh, in the sense of walking alongside my classmates and hearing them um, and walking together. So we've had some remarkable, remarkable moments together, I have to say. And uh, the support network that you become a part of here in the School of Music is, is really tremendous. That's amazing. Thank you all so much for, for sharing. I can definitely speak into that community aspect. I was Part of the men's girl, I was, as I was speaking with these professors earlier, and just the bond I've seen from the School of Music is amazing. One of my favorite things is always just walking next to the School of Music and just seeing everyone practicing together, just hearing the music coming out of there. It's just definitely a wonderful sight to see. Um, I just want to move back in the timeline and just see what advice you have for these students. We have mostly high schoolers in the chat today. I probably privileged to be able to speak with college level professors working in the industry for X amount of years. How, what should they be doing to prepare for um, entering into a major um, specifically within music, whether that's vocal performance or music education? Uh, what can they do to prepare for um, maybe in this last semester of high school? Let me, um, let me give one small suggestion. Um, don't freak out if you don't know exactly what you wanna do. <laughs> 
It's like all these people are saying all these things about all these majors, and I don't know about any of them. And that's okay. It's really okay. The way that our curriculum is built is kind of like a pyramid. In the first year at college, pretty much all the music majors take all the same classes. As you progress through your program, you get more specialized. When you get close to graduation, you're taking courses that are sort of specific to your major. But we have a lot of people that come to APU. They, they want to major in music, but they have no clue what they want to do in music. And that's perfectly fine. The other thing that's perfectly fine is to come thinking that you want to do something and then you change your mind. We're happy with that too. This is a time for you to figure it out. We don't expect you to come perfectly knowing your entire career trajectory. And that's part of what we hope to help you with is to say, hey, by the way, did you know there's this thing over here? No, you didn't know about that. Does that interest you? It's perfectly okay to not know and it's perfectly okay after you get here to change your mind. I'll just give one one piece of advice. Uh, try to connect with colleges ahead of time. So especially with I mean, the people you see here, well, all of our colleagues, if you just connect with the School of Music, whether it's through admissions or checking out the website, saying, I have this interest, what, what can you help me? We, we love to to help. That's why we're doing what we're doing. <laughs> so, I mean, when I, once I hear a violinist audition, I want to start getting hearing them through the summer, giving them lessons. And I know that's just that's the mindset we have. So, I would just advise you to to yeah, don't hesitate to connect with us. We want to get you on the right path, even even during our high school years. Awesome. Thank you both for, for sharing. I, I can definitely hope that these students will take that. Take the advice. I think choosing major was one of the scariest things for me. It's trying to figure out what, what my career is. Um, I changed my major three times my first semester, so I know what it's like to, <laughs> to change my major. But um, I think the definitely what you explained with that sort of pyramid structure of just being so open, open to so many different um, careers and pathways, I think that's so excellent how you're teaching, teaching um, just different areas of students. I've definitely had some friends take some music theory classes and I don't know how they do that. They all, they're all like geniuses by the time they finish that class, but just being exposed <laughs> to so many courses, that, that just sounds amazing. Um, I'm gonna move towards a, uh, a more personal question. Of course, APU is a, a faith-based institution. My next question for anyone here is, how does faith maybe impact the way that you teach and interact with your students and how do you incorporate that into, uh, into their learning? Um, here at AP, we do have faith-based integration learning with all with all our classes. Professors, what does that look like for you in your coursework? Maybe it's not so as as direct as like music and worship, but how do you incorporate faith into music education or into playing the violin? What does that look like for for any of you? Who wants well, to start? I'll, 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 yeah, I'll jump in here. Um, I mean, there's certain things as musicians that uh, are are universal. I mean, if it says B flat on the page, you have to play B flat. You know, there's there's uh, no uh, other way around that. But you find that the faculty members here do integrate their faith. They're not afraid to talk about God in the classroom. They're not afraid to pray um, before concerts or pray with a student or take prayer requests. Um, or to somehow, you know, in a rehearsal, it's not, uh, it's not a bad thing to talk about the faith of a composer or a certain musician that you're studying now, all, all those sorts of things that uh, kind of come together. And in addition, you're also with a body of believers that are not only on the full-time faculty, but also are your fellow students as well, and that we're all on in the same journey together. And that's one thing that, that students who come here that they find so um, uh, comforting is that it, they're in this college environment, which can be intensive, but they know that the person in the chair next to them may all shares the same faith and 
they're not afraid also to talk about that as well. So that that's that's one way that you find that the faith is done um, uh, every day, every hour, on our uh, in, uh, on our campus. Well, and where, what you'll find when you come here is at the foundation of who we are, we believe that we're all made in the image of God, period. And that God uniquely made you for who God wants you to be. And we'll help get you on that, get you on that pathway. Second, we believe that being an artist is a called vocation from God, just as you will find in Exodus with Bezalel and throughout the Old Testament and New Testament. God values what you do and what you bring to life, and it is essential. And God tells us to make melody to God, and we do that. And then how do we embed that? You find that in, in who we are and how we, we treat one another. You find that in the very curriculum, as, as Mr. Russell told you about. Yeah, faith is a, is a part of who we are as artists. So when we look at our composers, what do they believe? What posture did they come from? You know, how, did, how did their belief system influence uh, the music they made? And so not only do we study in class, you do. Uh, in, in the ensembles, uh, in the classrooms, you'll find uh, partnerships and projects such as uh, our, a Black History, our Black History Month concert that we do each February. Uh, we did a seminar on, on the Armenian genocide, which is a, a part of the news that, that just hit a, a few months ago and is just now finally settling. So you find that in, in the very actions of what we do. So faith is not a, by, a byproduct here or an add-on. It's, it's woven, woven in the tapestry of, of coming uh, to learn at APU and teaching at APU. Just uh, maybe tag on that briefly and, and say we have some wonderful conversations right out of Genesis 1 talking about how God values creativity and values beauty and bringing order into chaos. And music is one of, it's a very unique kind of substance that harmonizes a space, brings order into a space. And so whatever we're doing in that capacity fits all of those things, creativity, beauty, and uh, bringing order into chaos. Wonderful, thank you. And then I think Dr. Russell, I saw, I saw your mic come in and off there. Did you have something to, to say as well? Sure, sure. Yeah, I, was, um, I mean, they, uh, they've, they've already said uh, many great things. I, for me, yeah, my, my faith, uh, I feel like it, there are two broad categories where I see it in my role here as a professor. One is absolutely how I'm interacting with students. What What is my purpose that I'm trying to be Christ as a mentor, as a, as a, um, you know, someone who's, um, showing tough Christian love, tough. I mean, as being like real, how can I actually be, um, be, help people to the best of my ability? Um, but second, it, while sure, being a Christian doesn't affect how I read a B flat major chord, it absolutely affects what I believe music is and does. And that it, whenever I'm trying to create, a, a lot of what Dr. Martin was saying, um, when I'm trying to be a, a, the best violinist, I'm, I'm trying to bring soul and spirit and, and knowing that, um, that my creator, my, who lives in me and is infusing my life with so much uh, color, how can I, in how can I see that and feel that and, and understand that in what I'm doing, what I'm creating? I mean, that's the kind of thing that, that when I can share that with students and with colleagues, that it, it just, it doesn't have a, a parallel <laughs> to be hopefully not too um, hyperbolic. 
Wonderful, thank you so much. Uh, just as a reminder for everyone, we're coming up to the last uh, 10 or so minutes we have in today's event. So if you do have any additional questions, please feel free to um, send them in the chat. But uh, one other question I would have for, um, for you professors today is, you really spoke a lot into this throughout today's event, but what, what do you as educators want students to leave with? These students in the chat today, they are they may still be looking at a few different music colleges or they may still be wondering, where do I go? Why, why AP, what, what do you wanna leave in students? I've heard reasons such as maybe they will be able to learn from a like professional. Maybe they will be able to get into a specific job after college. Maybe they will grow as uh, faith-based individuals. Like what do you want to leave in students as educators? Uh, and like maybe maybe that feeds into why, why AP you? Oh, that's a pretty pretty big question, so feel free to take a moment. No, that's fine. Um, I think that uh, this has been said already. Let me just underline it. Um, to me, one of the greatest advantages of coming to APU is the accessibility of the faculty to the student. Um, if we were meeting face-to-face, -face, my, my way of describing it would be to say that we're just a knock on the door away. Uh, a lot of larger universities don't have teach, faculty teaching courses. They have grad assistants teaching courses. Um, there are some universities where students don't even see professors for a couple of years. Um, we're big enough to have a great variety of musical offerings and degree offerings, but we're still small enough that if a student says, hey, I got a problem, you know, can we talk on the phone or can we do a quick Zoom? We're, we're all that accessible. And I think that that's one of the biggest advantages that we have is that we're, we're not too big that, we, that we've lost that personal connection between student and faculty. And also to, to speak a little more into that, as we mentioned earlier, I mean, why APU? It's because of uh, the quality of education that you get. And also it's the faith element that you get as well. And that's something that really stands us out among universities is that you get both and you get both to a, a very high quality. And the fact that we're also in the LA area is something that, that um, I mean, yes, I work at APU, yes, they give me paychecks, but I have to say that it is unique and it's a, it's a special place because you get both of those combined and very few universities, like none really I can think of, uh, really can rival that. Awesome, thank you so much uh, to you both. Uh, one of my, uh, something I like to, to leave uh, events with is, um, again, we spoke across a variety of different things today and uh, Mr. Beatty, you mentioned this earlier with your, your own advice, but what is a piece of advice you want to leave with students? Again, maybe some of these students are on the fence about music. They don't know if they want to dive into a career in music. Maybe they don't know what college you want to go to. Um, again, we mentioned this a little bit before, but maybe you can dive into this if you haven't spoken yet, but what's a piece of advice you want to leave with um, the group of students we have in the chat today? Are you pointing that one at me? <laughs> This is open to, to anyone in, uh, in the floor. I would say that um, music is very unique. Um, it's a unique calling. Sometimes it feels like music chooses us and instead of us choosing music. Uh, it's very passion driven. Um, it's difficult, it's challenging, um, but the rewards are, are tremendous. Um, when, and as I did speak about earlier, there's always a kind of a financial component to that. It's like, if, if I do music, am I ever actually going to be able to ha have a career doing it? Can I actually have my vocation be my passion? And I think for all of us, we would not be here talking to you if we didn't think that wasn't possible. So we absolutely do believe that we can help equip you to make it possible for your passion to be your vocation. And also remember, I mean, when, when you're thinking about AP, remember that the professors were on your side. We want you to do well. We want you to do your best. And that even starts from the, uh, the auditions as well, that, that we're, we're um, rooting for you. 
And uh, so we would want to come alongside you from your audition, even before your audition, if, if you have questions, and then um, be with you all the way through your journey here at APU. And I, I, would, I would join that with both Professor Beatty and Professor Russell. Um, my, my advice to you is take the step, apply, and then audition. And we audition for our music scholarships, but apply and audition. And I say that from my, my personal heart. Um, I am the first artist in my family. Uh, my parents did not understand a call to, to be a musician. Uh, and I went and the school I went to, I, I applied and auditioned. And at the same time, I had applied and auditioned to go to a, a large school in Texas, Texas A&M and, and study geophysics. And because I had applied and auditioned at the other school, when in my heart, I had a very deep conversation with my parents that I want to be an artist. I want to be a musician. I feel called to do that because I had taken those steps, the options were there for me. And instead of going to Texas A&M to work with rocks, I went to the other school I applied for uh, and went as a music major. And I remember my father eight years later coming up and telling me, I'm so glad you decided to work with people instead of rocks. And Throughout my life, as I'm, I'm closing in on the last, the last part of my, my career, the last quarter of my career, that God has been faithful. And as an artist, God has taken care of me and walked with me and provided for me. And there are amazing jobs. And the country, the world needs artists. They need musicians. So... My advice, take the step, apply, audition, and give yourself an opportunity to explore your calling that, that God has given to you for your life. Can I just underline that, Randall? Um, there's a quote that every time I read it, I just, I love. It's from a gentleman named Carl Polnack. And this is his quote. Uh, he says, if we were a medical school and you were here as a med student practicing appendectomies, you would take your work very seriously because you would imagine that some night at 2 a.m., someone is going to waltz into your emergency room and you're going to have to save their life. Well, my friends, someday at 8 p.m., someone is going to walk into your concert hall and bring you a mind that is confused, a heart that is overwhelmed, a soul that is weary. Whether they go out whole again will depend partly on how well you do your craft. Wonderful, thank you all so much for just your time today and for all the, the wonderful, um, wonderful responses that we've heard today. Just a few uh, logistical things at the end of today's event. Um, if you have not yet applied yet, uh, you can do so at apu.edu slash apply. Uh, definitely begin your um, application over there. If you have any questions, either for admissions or even music related questions, uh, Brooke Bonner just sent in the UG admissions email. If there's any music related questions, we'll be sure to send it over to the appropriate department because again, we're representing various departments today. And then of course, with the um, music application, if you want to apply for School of Music, there's also a slide room. So Brooke, if you mind sending in the slide room link as well, um, definitely, definitely take a look at that also. But again, if you have any additional questions, please feel free to um, email that line. We'll connect you with a correct counselor and with the correct professors. But once again, thank you all for joining today. And professors, thank you all so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.